my appreciation for the volunteers here in Berkeley who are putting this lecture online. And you know who you are, and we appreciate it. And also the volunteers who are in the Gold Coast, Australia, uh, translating into Mandarin uh, for an audience that is bit by bit growing. can hear in Chinese what's being said here in English. And gratitude to the folks who are helping translate into Vietnamese. Our balcony is just about full tonight of people listening to the Vietnamese translation. We're going to have to clean out some of those book boxes. Book boxes. Actually, actually, more actually, people actually. listen, my goodness. So, <coughs> now, uh, let's chase that frog away. Appreciate everybody taking time out of your Saturday evening to uh, come and investigate the Flower Garland Sutra. This text was first put into the air 2,500 years ago, which is, I mean, what do we have to compare with that? There's kind of nothing really to compare. Uh, something that old that's still alive. And we're on version number three at least, if not more, Version number one was whatever the Buddha spoke. Might have been Prakrit, they talk about it, some sort of Pali uh, vernacular, some sort of local patois, difang ko yin. They're not quite sure what language the Buddha spoke. Then, when it got written down, it was first written down probably in Sanskrit. And it made its way to China three times, three different times over 400 years. And now we got it in English. And it's being translated into Vietnamese and then back into Chinese as well. So that's pretty amazing that we're in this flow, this current of Dharma. Um, what you're holding in your hands, what you have in front of you, is a fossil. It's absolutely a record of times past captured, right? In this case, it's words. But uh, when you have a fossil, I, I grew up in Ohio, northern Ohio, and the uh, northwestern Ohio was probably underwater. Uh, I grew up on the shores of Lake Erie, and Lake Erie is part of the Great Lakes. And if uh, we talk about the Midwest and Ohio, northwestern Ohio doesn't look western at all, doesn't look midwestern. You're much more accurate to say, I come from the Great Lakes. Uh, and where the water covered the land, there's lots and lots and lots of life forms preserved there. So in north, northwestern Ohio, when you dig, fossils are not far away. And then you go a little further west, go through Indiana, through Illinois, up through Wisconsin to the Dakotas, and you get dinosaurs, right? What is that? That's a life form that is captured in time. Usually we dig it up, it's in the earth. But here we have a fossil that doesn't have time because it came out of the mind, it came out of an awakened human mind. And at that point, the mind, you have to kind of go, you go, you know, your, your mind expands because what is timeless? Everything we know has a time, past, present, future. But the mind, they say, that whenever anybody wakes up and looks deep, out comes a sutra. So that, oh, my phone is listening to me. Timelessly, right? Thank you. Please go back to sleep. All right. Um, what did I say that cued it? My goodness. I don't use Siri anyway. So, so um, the mind, they say, when you wake up, you can pull a sutra out of your mind. So it's there, encrypted in our ageless DNA layer somehow. It's already hardwired down in our nature to be able to see these principles. And what is it? It's principles. It's how things work over time. 
time and time and time again. So, interesting, huh? Okay, shall we begin? Um, I'd like to invite you all to join me. This is uh, the title. Da Fang Guang Fo Huai and Jing, and we recite that musically, and we include in it, we add to it, the names of the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas who were important in, in, in bringing this up and uncovering the sutra. Huai Yen Hai Hui Fo Pusa. I like to uh, I like to start the lecture this way because. I did a pilgrimage um, in my formation as a monk, and this is what I recited every time I bowed to the ground on the pilgrimage, and bowed to the ground for eight hours a day, um, hundreds of bows a day for two and a half years, so that's a lot of, a lot of recitations of this, and when I, uh, when I hear it, when I s- hear myself chanting it, it seems to touch down to that deeper place where uh, I think the sutra lives, you know. So it's, it's a good reminder. Hello? Jerry, is this guy hot? Is our mic up? Let's Not quite, so. It's a powerful guitar, but not that powerful. There we are. Thank you. Good. our melody. Okay, people who know, uh, please join in. We're invoking the presence of the Sutra and the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas is the idea. Here we go. Namo part about the sutra is what it contains. So let's go in to our text and I'm going to invite you to turn to page 6 and 7. J. 
Deacon Rocher, do you want a chair? If you, if you're okay, 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 good, good. Helen, do you want a chair? <laughs> oh, we got two Helens. Both of you responded. We have a nun, Helen. Would you be gracious enough to give her? That's so kind of you. Thank you. You have to. You got your 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 scarf there. So, all right, we've got that seat for you, Dharma Master. And she needs a zafu there. So, okay. Thank you, Helen. We have Sangha protocols, which is. It's actually, it's very fair. The Buddha set it up that whoever took precepts first goes in front. So, Let me give you a background. I know there are folks here tonight who haven't been here for a while, so might want to catch up where we've been. This is called the Flower Garland Sutra, Hua Jing. What it talks about is a bodhisattva, an awakened being. And the chapter, among the 40 chapters of the sutra, that talks most about the bodhisattva is the 10 stages chapter, Shi Di Pin. We used to call it the 10 grounds, we changed it to the 10 stages. And there are 10 segments, 10, 10 chapters in the chapter. Ten subchapters. And we're in the last one. We made it all the way to number ten. The subchapters have a structure, and we're in that very first part. That structure is usually praises. Somebody shows up, in this case, it's gods, devas. And right away, if you were raised like I was in a Christian context or in a what's called Abrahamic, which includes what? They call the people of the book. That would include Jews, Muslims, Christians, and all the different flavors inside those groups. Then the idea of gods with an S at the end is already like, what? Wait, what? Gods? There's only one. Those are monotheistic traditions that cover the globe. That's the dominant perspective is there's one, only one. Why, what do you need more than one for? Right? Well, on the other side of the globe, there's a very different story being told. And that if you go to India, for example, do they talk about one God? No, they talk about many gods, polytheistic, polytheistic, multiple gods, right? There's Vishnu, there is Brahman, there is Shiva, there is Ram, right? And lots of other smaller divinities, lesser divin less central divinities. So is that a Buddhist view? Mm -mm, not, also not. We're not monotheistic, we're not polytheistic. How do we describe it? People say, they come up to me all the time, often in airport waiting rooms, when they figure I'm fair game, I'm going to be sitting there until the plane takes off, so let's go over and try them out, you know. Yeah. And they go, you believe in God? And that answer is really important, you know. And the way I translate it these days is, do you agree with me? Is my story and your story the same story? Because if it's not, you're in trouble, you know. So, okay, okay, that's... The way, that's the way the teaching comes down, and I was, I was steeped in that myself. I'm familiar with it. So, what do Buddhists? How do you answer that question? You believe in God? It's not always harsh. I shouldn't shouldn't stereotype it. Um, sometimes it's um, well, um, mm, I, I, uh, 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 I don't. What what are you? You know, what, what what do you call this? You know, meaning you. What do you call yourself? You know, so it's like, mm, yeah. Um, what I've learned is, that often my answer is, um, I've been a monk for forty years. I teach Buddhist Christian dialogue at UC Berkeley Seminary. Are you sure you want to take me on? 
And often it's like, mm, well, mm, I, actually, I need to go to the, uh, I'll, be, I'll talk to you later. You know, so that often. But why? Because usually the challenge is not sincere. It doesn't come from a wish to learn or know. Or they're not concerned about me at all. They're concerned to, you know, other, other issues like saving a soul. So that's good. Um, but often that's not the time to talk about theology. If, if the request is sincere, if somebody really wants to know, you can say, hmm, Buddhism is not monotheistic. It's not that kind of story. Buddhism is not polytheistic, multiple creator beings. Buddhism, as I understand it, there are many Buddhisms, but the Buddhism that I will speak from is non-theistic. What does that mean? It means... Our story does not talk of a creator God who made heaven and earth, all the beings, and on the seventh day rested. It's a different story. And that's legit, to have a different story. There's many people on the globe. right? So then you stop. And you wait and you see, how was that heard? And if the person is like, if you can see, usually there's a, you know, closing down. Did that, did that work? And if the person is like, non what does non-theistic mean? You know, say, there are many gods in Buddhism. Tonight's text. Plural devas. Is Buddhism atheistic? No. We talk about six levels of gods in the desire realm, 28 levels, heavens, layers of gods in the form realm, four layers of gods in the form, many, many gods, right? But it's a different story about what those gods do. And you stop, and you wait and you check, you know, is the person still tracking, or is that like, er, kilt, ter, tilt, not, er, 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 you know. I'm sorry, Dave. You know. So, and if people, then, then it's, then seriously, you know, it's like I've had some very interesting theological discussions in the Huahang waiting room in Taipei, in Taoyuan, you know, <laughs> waiting for people to, you know. And so that's interesting. That when you go around the religious world, if you look at all the religions in the world, how many religions say our story does not begin with a creator being who is usually male and everything arose from him? You pretty much find one, Buddhism. Right? Our story doesn't start with a male creator. What is it put in place of a male creator? You might ask. The mind. The one in you right now. And that's a different story. That's a really different way of looking at our source, the world we live in, who's got the power. Are you free to build a world you want to live in? What are your limits? All those important questions. What are you capable of? If you start with the idea that we have a mind that is very, very powerful, and what we do with our mind matters a whole lot, you're on the same path the Buddha walked. You could say, even though you don't have to say it, you could be a Buddhist. right? We pay attention to our minds. So... Look at this. Here, here we go. Here's how it breaks down. Most of the religions in the world look out for the power. Where is it? It's out there. And you better tune in to what that power is saying if you want to have a good life. Because that, you know, you better get the word. What if, you, what if God's angry with you? You're in trouble, right? What does Buddhism do? Buddhism says, turn it around. Look within. 
listen to your mind. How different is that? It's 180 degrees different from 90% of the world's religions. And that's important. That's important. So why talk about it this way? Because our sutra tonight <laughs> begins with not only multiple gods, but their women. How cool is that? Female devas called devis, D-E-V-I-S, devis, right? So, female gods, devis. What do we call them? We call them goddesses. And Hollywood borrows that word to talk about starlets, right? To talk about movie actors who are the current it girl. She can be a goddess of the silver screen, right? We talk about that kind of... And, but if we say, no, no, real goddesses, female devas who live in heaven, in the heavens, I go, whoop, whoop, wait, what religion are we in? You know? So that's why I'm unpacking this, because this is sensitive territory. And I want us to go into the sutra, not just say it and run by, right by it. Oh, the goddesses are saying, you know. Now, where did we get that? Um, turn back to page four and five. Flip over one page. Tian zhu cai nu wu you liang. There it is right there. Top, top line. All the exquisite deva maidens, limitless in number. Okay. In other words, here come the goddesses. To do what? To praise the Buddha. Wowee. Not only do we get to meet goddesses, we get to hear them sing. What else does it say? Mi bu huan xi gong yang fu ge zhou zhong zhong miao yue yin xi yi ci yan er zan tan. Right? Rejoiced everyone as they made offerings to the Buddha. They all played marvelous music of many kinds and praised the Buddha with the following words. So, this is the Davies Spotify list. This is their favorite tunes, right? This is their Pandora channel that they've created to listen to, to, to sing with a variety of musical sounds, praises of the Buddha. Okay. Now, to here's I'm going to step aside briefly again. Um, <coughs> tonight, November 16th, 2019, chances are there, you, if, how many places right this minute on the planet are they explaining the Huayan Jing? My guess is you, you only need one hand to count them, maybe not even two fingers. This is not a popular sutra to explain. Why not? The typical traditional way to talk about it is Oh, it's the Buddha's highest philosophy. It's profound and deep. It's the sutra of the Dharma realm. Therefore, nobody can understand it. Don't explain it. Sounds harsh. Sounds extreme. Yep. Nobody explains it. They say, oh, too difficult. Too, too far out there. Or, if you explain it, you can't understand it. The Tang Dynasty monks, Fa Zhang and others, knew how to explain it use their commentaries, and you pick it up, and sure enough, it becomes philosophical real quick. It's analyzed into four different kinds. There's phenomena and phenomena interpenetrating without obstruction. There is phenomena and noumena interpenetrating without obstruction. And you go, bong, bong, yeah, I, let's see, didn't I have to clean the bathroom? I need, yeah, so, you know put the book back on the shelf and nobody touches it because it's genuinely philosoph philosophical when you get to the commentators. I will never forget uh, Professor Zhou Guoli, Master Shenhua's uh, secretary, his, his uh, corresponding secretary, came from Manchuria to Gold Mountain Monastery back in the, uh, early, the late 70s. Wonderful man. Uh, and... Uh, he was a judge in, in his previous life. So uh, he knew that I was very interested in the Avatamsaka, and I had done the pilgrimage. And so he gave me a book when I got back, Commentaries on the Avatamsaka Sutra. 
And I was like, wow, thrilled, you know. Wow, what did the ancients say about this book? I opened it up and I, got to, I didn't get past page one. I had to close it. And I tried again and I didn't get past page two and I closed it. Because it was like every sentence was, was extremely left brain intellectual. Brilliant, deep, left brain. Head heavy, right? Tell me what is philosophical about Davies praising the Buddha in the heavens. From this, my right brain goes, bung, 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 bung. Let me imagine what those Davies sounded like when they sang. It must have been amazing music. Right? My right brain lights up when I actually touch the text. You notice? I mean, that's really, really different. Now, if you didn't know the context, how come nobody else is explaining the Avatamsaka Sutra tonight in China, in Taiwan, in Malaysia, in Hong Kong, in Singapore, or elsewhere? Because of the reputation of it being all left brain. It's not my experience at all. Because that reputation is attached to the sutra, people don't open it. They don't. They think, oh, too, too difficult. Too much Sanskrit, you know. Okay, now, mind you, this very text has philosophical elements that blow the mind because it's talking about the Buddha's awareness immediately upon awakening. This is, it was spoken when the Buddha had just open his wisdom. <coughs> so it contains that kind of unfiltered, undiluted, they call it milk right from the cow, right? Although we're vegans, we say soy milk right from the soybean, okay? Unfiltered, right? Almond milk directly from the almond. Did anybody see that Dean Milk Distributors, the largest milk distributor in America, went bankrupt? last week, declared bankruptcy. Why? People aren't drinking milk anymore. Cow's milk. Their reason for doing that, this is, uh, this, we, we're back on the Avatamsaka Sutra a minute ago, right? The philosophical devas, right? Dairy, the, the alternate beverages, almond milk, soy milk, wheat, uh, oat, oat milk, and others, the sales have just gone like this, and dairy sales have gone like this. They went bankrupt because why? People aren't asking for their product the way they used to. Times they are a change in, said Bob Dylan. Right? How interesting, because boy, when I was growing up, it was three glasses a day. Tom, a body does a body good, right? Got milk. We had to drink milk, said the American Dairy Association. And that poster in your third grade classroom, which was an advertisement. But it was in every single classroom and every single school across America. You need three glasses of milk a day to be healthy. Cow's milk. Not so much anymore, interestingly. Okay, back to the sutra. So, here's... The Avatamsaka telling us what the, we get the we don't get the music we get the words, what the devas sang in the heavens when they wanted to praise the Buddha. How cool is that? All right. So now we have uh, this is our third lecture on this preparatory section of the tenth stage, but just because I've played it up so much in introducing it, do you want to read the whole thing? that they, let's, let's read the, all their praises because it, it stops later on. Okay? Um, let's, I'm saying let's go back just a touch to page four and five. We can start with number two, paragraph number two, fo shen an zuo yi guo du. All right? And uh, let's see. We actually, we've done one, two, three, four. We stopped with... Um, Mother's womb, I believe, yes, last time. Okay, let's just go down to the bottom. 
Um, I'll give you a line, and you give it back. For shen an zuo yi guo du. Yi che shi jie xi xian shen. Shen xiang duan yan wu liang yi. Fa jie guang da xi chong man. Okay, over to the right, ready? Let's do it in unison. The Buddha sits in repose in a single land, comma, take a breath, yet his bodies appear in all worlds everywhere, semicolon, take a breath. His physical hallmarks are majestic and limitless in number, comma, take a breath, as they fill the great expanse of the Dharma realm. All right, we've we talked about that last time. We ready to do another? Let's do another set. Let's do a Chinese English. Here we go. Yu yi mao kong fang guang ming. Pu mie shi jian fan nao an. Guo du wei chen ke zhi shu. Ci guang ming shu bu ke che. All righty, over to the right, ready, in unison. From a single pore on the skin, he sends forth bright lights that dispel the darkness of beings' afflictions everywhere. One could count the fine motes of dust in lands, but the quantity of those lights could not be known. All right, we're not, notice we're not uh, stopping to digest it, we're going to Go down to the bottom. Let's do another one, another set. First the Chinese and the English. Here we go. Huo jian ru lai ju zhong xiang. Zhuan yu wu shang zheng fa lun. Huo jian you xing zhu fo cha. Huo jian ji ran an bu dong. Do you, do you feel a little more goddess-like? Do you, do you gods? That's okay. I'm sure it's gender-free there. But you know. Okay, English. Here we go. Ready? One might see the thus come one, replete with every hallmark, comma, turning the wheel of Dharma, unsurpassed and right, comma, or one might see him traveling to Buddha Kshetras, or see him calm and still, unmoving and serene. All right, one more. We're going to do one more. We, we're going to go to the bottom of the page here. Ready? Chinese, here we go. Huo xian zhu yu dou shuai gong. Huo xian xia zuo ru mu tai. Ru mu tai. Huo shi zhu tai, huo chu tai. Xi ling wu liang guo zhong jian. All right, over one more to the English, page five. Here we go, together. He might appear abiding in the Tushita Heaven Palace, or appear to enter his mother's womb. He might appear to rest in the womb or being born, in limitlessly many worlds, he makes appearances as these. Okay, okay, okay. Here are the goddesses. These are the things they choose to praise. And where are they? This is the, um, the beginning of the 10th stage chapter. So there, um, what's coming is another teaching, another um, set of instructions. So a bodhisattva student can learn everything he or she wants to know about the bodhisattva path. That's coming. That's, but we're in the very early setup. Um, this is the, the preamble, the, the, the preliminary stuff that happens before the teachings come down. Different times in, in different stages there's different preparations um, 
in the very beginning, the, the bodhisattvas uh, wanted to hear the first stage, and the speaker of the chapter said, uh-uh, nope, I'm not going to explain it. I don't want to do it, because you're not going to get it. And they requested twice, over three times, nope, I'm not going to explain it. The Buddha steps in and says, go ahead, it's okay, they'll get it. You have to say it. You know, okay. He didn't want to disobey or to deny the Buddha's instructions, to, uh, to refuse. So that was the preparation for the first stage. Now we're at the tenth, and the speaker, Jin Gang Zhang Pusa, Vajra Treasury Bodhisattva, is uh, into it. He's, the Dharma wheel is rolling, as they say, turning the Dharma wheel. And uh, there's, the teachings are flowing along. So uh, this is also, what is this? This is the, the request. Just a minute ago, you saw, uh, you saw our two stalwart Dharma requesters walking around and bowing and will the Sangha with great virtue uh, making their request. And this is the Devas doing the same thing. So we're, Master Hua actually gave us that um, preface as uh, he said the, the Dharma, they say, Fa bu gu qi ping yuan fang sheng. The Dharma doesn't arise on its own. The Buddha never says, okay, Dharma time, sit down. I'm going to talk. Get out your iPhones and hit your record button. He doesn't say that. Uh, it's, please, Buddha, we got a problem. Would you explain how to solve it? Uh, please, Buddha, uh, my mother is, is in bad shape and needs some help. Would you rescue her? Please, Buddha, talk about what is wonderful, ineffable, and inconceivable. And in every case, the Buddha would say, hmm, sure, let's, let's look into it. In this case, it's uh, bodhisattvas wanting to know how to cultivate to Buddhahood. What does it say? They say, here's the Buddha sitting in repose, but one body puts out limitless bodies. It's like, ooh. And their hallmarks are majestic, the 32 special hallmarks. If you want to see an example of 32 hallmarks, please enjoy looking at our three Ming Dynasty Buddhas that arrive. These are wooden images that are 500 plus years old that came to us through the kindness of a donor, Southern California, and um, everyone we've introduced these Buddhas to, and uh, we encourage people to come up. You don't have to feel like you can't set foot on the altar. Come up and get a closer look. These are incredibly inspiring, uh, serene. What is the Buddha? He sits in repose in every land. And down on the third stanza, they see him calm and still, unmoving and serene. These images are very serene. People who get close and take a look all say, I think they're happy now to receive people's bows and incense and offering and attention and affection and all the things people feel when they look at Buddhas. And these are, you know, finest examples of a period in Chinese Buddha, Chinese Buddha image making where the Buddhas were particularly human. Um, there, are, there are other periods of Chinese Buddha images, which are some of the world's finest ever, ever, when they were more abstract and kind of um, not as easy to relate to. I, maybe I'm speaking for myself. Everybody I know has different preferences when they look at Buddhas. But the Ming Dynasty Buddhas have a, a human quality. It, they're interestingly not necessarily Chinese. They don't necessarily look Asian. Likewise, they don't look Western, Caucasian either. But their humanity is on display, and the humanity is very noble. 
很特别，很特别，很清高，不但清高，而且呢，很难说了哈。We need more Chinese adjectives to describe what these images give off, but the word for their qi zhi is definitely part of it. There's a elegance and a humanity that is very wonderful. If you go take a look, you know, uh, at, after the lecture, come take a look. Um, so we're blessed with these three images, and people say, you know, they look happier. They look happy because they're now, you know, being uh, appreciated, not down in the mowing shed covered with cobwebs and dust the way they were when we found them. So. Anyway, so the Davies are going, yeah, 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 Buddha, Buddha. We we like the Buddha because he's sitting there, but he's able to send out his huashen, his ingshen, his responses. And his transformed bodies, in worlds, everywhere. They fill up the Dharma realm, and they say not only that, but the Buddha is sending out light from his skin pores. How about that? That's amazing, right? But the、um, that's one quality of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas described in the sutras that. Artists have a harder time capturing, which is what the lights surrounding the Buddha. Because art is two D, statues are three D, right? You get mass. But paintings,、um, can you all? Let's see here. There's an image. You, those of you sitting here have a harder time. There's a Amitabha right back there behind Owen on the wall. And it's painted by a nun.、Uh, and that particular Buddha image—it's a flat 2D representation. That one, people who appreciate、uh, flat paintings of the Buddha say that's a very lighted Buddha. If you look at it, you can actually see the rays kind of moving. Just not right. It's a 2D image, but it's quite wonderful. It's hard to capture the light of a Buddha. But people say, Master Hua would say, "Was a shirfu shirfu, shama shi gong de na gong de shi shama na shirfu." What is merit and virtue? Jiu shi yi ge guang ming ma. He would say, "Jiu shi guang ming ma." He would say, "It's light." What is merit? What is gong de? These pivotal words in describing the Buddha, and it's light. He would say, "So okay." If it's light, Shifu, where does the light come from? And he would say, from your nature. Everybody has light, but a Buddha has light that has been uncovered from the same place. Our light is in our nature. They say it shines like a thousand suns. I'm just giving you the standard description, right? But we cover it over with what? Wu Ming. No light. Lack of light, which is what a covering, kind of like a, like if you're a boat owner, barnacles. Anybody ever try to clean barnacles off a boat? You have to chisel and chisel and you have to scrape, and they're they barnacles are these aquatic marine, and you know、uh, beings that cling to the bottom of boats. Ignorance covers us the way barnacles cover boats. You have to scrape them off, but what is the Buddha Dharma? Eighty-four thousand Dharma practices, precisely meant to take the ignorance off our nature, so it can shine, so that light shines. All right, the Buddha has done that work; he shines. Who has done that work a little closer to us than the Buddha? Well, they used to talk about Master Empty Cloud, Xu Yin Lao He Shan, right, Master Xu Yin, and they said. From behind, you knew that he was in the room. If if you had your back to him, you could feel him. He is said to be a body pusa, a bodhisattva of the eighth stage, and his whatever he had done in his cultivation of a hundred and twenty years, mind you,、um, radiated this quality of what do we call it? We have a word for it: charisma. You could say, but that doesn't—it's not the same. But it's a quality that, when you stand around it, you feel it. 
You may not be able to see it. I can't see it, but you feel it. There's something about this person that moves me, right? We, we have language for it, but it's imprecise. The Buddha has done that to the max. He has uncovered his nature so that from a single pore of his skin, he sends forth bright lights that break the darkness of beings' afflictions everywhere. We actually have descriptions of what it was like to be around the historical Buddha when he was walking through the streets of Shravasti or Magadha or Bihar, what is now Bihar, Bodh Gaya, all those places where the Buddha traveled. They said, around the Buddha, you felt very peaceful. And just being around him, your troubles seem to shrink away to nothing. No more worries. Just being around him, the power of the Buddha's light just bathed you with feelings of well-being. What was going on? Maybe it was Maybe he was wiping away your afflictions by osmosis, by presence, by what, what do they call it? Uh, uh, collateral, <laughs> collateral luminance, not collateral damage. You were in the bomb blast. No, collateral luminance. You were in the rays of the Buddha. They d- people describe it. They said you just you're around the Buddha, and it's just like. Things that were before this were like totally a mystery to you about yourself. Suddenly, like, boop, gone. If uh, anybody ever watched Dewdrops, you ever because we meditate a lot. We, if we're meditating outdoors, you can Buddha Root Farm is a perfect place to watch this. You wake up in the morning and there's dew on the grass. Right, it's just part of nature's night to day to night cycle and if you're sitting there and there's dew on the grass and maybe on your cover your ground cloth maybe on your sleeping bag cover or your tent and if you wait what happens that dew evaporates goes back to, to to moisture right in the air the air takes it back you ever have that experience of watching the dew go back to nothing they described being in the buddha's presence the same way your concerns, your worries, your doubts, your fears, your nastiness inside, your whininess, right? Your meanness, all part of wuming, things that cover, all part of fan now, our greed, our dissatisfaction, our being off center and not quite, all that just goes like dew from your tent flap. And your home. I'm right where I belong. Simply by being in the Buddha's presence, because why? He's shining. Okay, capture that in paint. Oh, it's hard. <laughs> capture that on Photoshop. It's hard. Right? Capture it on your with your nice new digital camera. Mm. But it's real. And the sutras talk about it. I I once did a an analysis of the Avatamsaka filtering words talking about light. Jinchuan, try it sometime. Just go, Jinwei Shi, try it out. Look at all the references to light that appear in the pages of the Avatamsaka, and it's almost every single page somebody is talking about light. Here's an example um, Sudana Shansai Tongzi. He's the hero who. Um, does a pilgrimage in the last chapter of the Avatamsaka and he goes to see 53 teachers and every teacher he visits is a pilgrim, right? Susan is a pilgrim. Every teacher he visits he goes <laughs> I'll spare you the accent. I have a very good Susan accent, very accurate. Right? So he says uh, great sage, he said, I have heard that you're really good at teaching the Dharma. I want to know, how do you cultivate the Bodhisattva path 
How do you practice bodhisattva's practices? Could you explain it for me? Okay, that's the question he asks. And he always gets a question back in return. The teachers don't answer him right away. They say, Good man, have you made the great Bodhi Resolve? Siri is answering me again. Have you made the great Bodhi Resolve, Siri? She says, interesting question. <laughs> yeah, you bet that's it. Shut up. Here, get it. It's an interesting question. So, they say, have you made the great Bodhi Resolve? Sudhana says, wait, what's how we fought Bodhi Shin? I have. I made the Bodhi Resolve a long time ago. Oh, good. Okay, well, get out your notebook. Get out your Zafu. We're going to meditate. And they proceed to teach him how to practice their particular specialty Dharma practice. Okay, that's the Avatamsaka, right? And I checked it out, and often the teachers talk about light. For example, there's one visit, one of his visits, he goes to see a Brahman. Who is a Brahman? A Brahman is one who is a monotheist, right? Brahmins go back to Brahma. And they are a very strong feature of the Indian spiritual landscape, which was the home of the Avatamsaka. Uh, there's, it's an entire caste, right? The Brahman caste. So this particular Brahman, is, uh, his name is Insatiable. And he, his particular Dharma practice and what he tells Sudhana to do, he says, oh, sure, okay, good, you made the Bodhi result. Here, climb up this tree of knives and throw your body into the pit of boiling oil and you'll be fine. All your Bodhisattva practices will come to fruition. And Sudhana goes, ha! Ugh, ugh. Am I on candid camera? Is this Halloween? No, he doesn't say that. He says, this guy's a demon. He's trying to ruin my Tao Ye, my practices. Okay, he has a very negative reaction to, uh, to the Brahmin's suggestion that he slice his body up to bits and then burn it in a pot of oil. So all the devas at that moment come down, particularly the, the dev, devas from the Brahma heaven. They say, oh, no, 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 mistake, stop bad nope this is a true good and wise advisor do not mistake what he is trying to teach you when we subjected our bodies to the five fires sun moon etc 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 all of our former pleasures the thing we used to love turned dark like a clump of ink compared to what we received when we followed his instructions. As soon as we followed his instructions, everything lit up. And we understood. Right? So, light images. Right? Their palaces turned to clumps of ink. And it was like dark and, you know. So I was like, oh, wow. And on and on. So Sudhana, uh, Sudhana gets instructions from so many people that have to do with following light. Interesting. So, for a future reference, just pay attention. Here, in our second praise verse, the Davies are saying, wow, Buddha, skin pores, put out light. And those lights break up people's afflictions. So when you're next to him, you just feel so good, right? We had that experience. We, I should speak for myself. Had that, I had that experience next to Master Hua that... Often you could feel like you were being sunburned. <laughs> it was not always pleasant to be in the presence of so much concentrated attention. You know, I didn't see light from Master Hua's skin pores. I felt like I had stepped in front of a bright spotlight that could shine every single lie I'd ever told, every single uh, drink I'd ever taken, you know, every single time I'd ever cheated it was all visible to him somehow and I knew it and I could and it was like like being under an x-ray why that's who he was he had that presence about him and 
<coughs> behind it was never ever a sense of harm or danger or not like that, but it's just uncomfortable to suddenly be totally invisible, totally visible, not invisible, totally visible, unprotected from somebody's. And he knew everything I... He sees you when you're bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out, right? Better than Santa Claus. Master Hua could see everything I'd ever done. And right with it was that sense of I could also see in him the potential of perfection that I could become if I cultivate, if I put myself into the form that he made available, a monastic form. So it was both this total visibility in every detail, every wart, every wrinkle, every you know knot in my was there on display as he watched. Just and this is just by coming in front of the person, right? Just having his attention on you. But right with it was that sense of, and you can wake up, and here's what you'll look like. Here's your potential. So there was this like sobering and encouragement and humbling and support at the same time, which was priceless. And I think it was a function of that light of an uncovered nature. I don't know, have any other way to describe it, but that's what I get from the second stanza. On one hand, you could say, wow, that's really freaky. What kind of an alien being is this sending light out from his skin, you know? But when you meet it on two feet, you go, oh, maybe it's exactly what it says. Maybe this is not metaphor. Maybe this is not religious idolatry and devotion. Maybe this is reporting, reportage. This is a document, documenting what happened. Why would a Davy try to confuse me or sell me a story? Mm -mm. This is factual, only it's a set of facts that we don't get until our minds are really quiet. Right? Okay. You could see the thus come one replete with every hallmark, turning the wheel of Dharma unsurpassed and right, or now you get the or. Or you could see this, or you could see this, or you could see this. It's a list, right? We might see him traveling to other lands. Or you could see him sitting still. He might appear in the heavens like Maitreya waiting to be born down in our world next time. Or Ru Tai, Zhu Tai, Chu Tai, Chu Tai, first tone, right? Tai. Three things that come from what are called Ba Xiang Cheng Dao, the eight features of attaining the way. They say every Buddha goes through eight different stages. It's a pattern in their when they arrive as Buddhas. Okay, and three of them have to do with coming into Lady Maya's body and then being born. And those are you can all Buddhas do that. Uh, okay? And in limitlessly many worlds, the Buddha shows up like that. So that's one of those lists, Ba Xiang Chang Dao, the eight characteristics of a Buddha as he or becomes a Buddha. Right? Now, if I were to post a quiz, Jin Chuan would start to get very uncomfortable. What are the eight? Never mind. Sorry, I wouldn't do that to you. So, so I got seven. Yeah. So uh, they're very interesting because they include. Things like um, being born, right? Leaving home, turning the Dharma wheel. No, no. Uh, there's vanquishing demons, Xiangmo, right? Defeating Mara, then turning the Dharma wheel, then entering Nirvana, and then distributing the Sharira after. So uh, I don't know if that's eight. Anybody counting? So, but uh, 
begins with the two sheet of heaven. Here's, that's why this verse has one, two, four of them. Okay? That's what's going on in this verse is uh, four of the... Uh, okay, in the next verse, page, let's turn over to six, page six and seven. We get more of them without the demons. I'll give you a line, you give it back, ready? Everybody? Okay, over to the right, ready? He might let's do it together. Here we go. He might appear to leave the home life and walk the world's paths, or appear in the Bodhimanda, realizing right awakening. He may show himself speaking Dharma or entering nirvana, so all in the ten directions, without exception, can see. So uh Cheng Dao is one of the eightfold mark hallmarks. Uh Chu Jia is another one. So leaving home. Chu Tai Chu Jia Cheng uh Xiang Mo Chu Dao Cheng Dao uh Ru Nepan Fan Bu So those are the eight <coughs> and within these two verses that's that's where this list comes from. So all the different and they say every Buddha does the same in the path in the progress of becoming a Buddha. So from the two sheet to heaven, born uh, coming down, then the relationship with his mother, Lady Maya, and then coming out, leaving home, t- teaching demons, realizing the way, entering nirvana, and then sharing the results of cultivation, the sharira with living being. Alrighty, there we are. More verses. Um, we have been doing something unusual um, among sutra lectures, as far as I know, we've been singing the sutra. And I have this marvelous Taylor 12 string guitar tuned to Dadgad for all you guitar geeks out there. And being a guitar geek myself, it's important to keep it in tune. That's the culprit right there. Ready for ready for real life, ready for big time.
Okay, that's our melody, and let's see here. Um, 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 um. I'm going to take us back to page four and five, if you will, and we're going to start on stanza two, the Buddha sits in repose. And what's remarkable is that in the that we've done this twice, this is our third time, people seem completely ready to jump in and sing the sutra, never having done it before, ever. Or maybe nobody ever has done it before, possibly. But what's amazing is that people say, yeah, yeah, I like doing that. So I hope that tonight everybody feels encouraged and empowered to try it, to see what the Avatamsaka Sutra sounds like coming out of your own nature, right, to a melody. So we're going to start with the Buddha sits in repose. The Buddha sits in repose in a single land. Yet his bodies appear in all worlds everywhere. His physical hallmarks are majestic and limitless in number. As they fill up the great expanse of the Dharma realm. From a single pore in the skin, he sends forth bright lights that dispel the darkness of beings' afflictions everywhere. One could count the fine motes of dust in land, but the quantity of those lights could not be known. One might see the dust come on replete with every hallmark, turning the wheel of Dharma unsurpassed and right. Or one may see him traveling to Buddha's Kshetra's Buddha lands, or see him calm and still, unmoving and serene. The nice thing about this uh, open-ended is you can fit any number of syllables in it and it still works, right? Okay, last one, here we go. He might appear abiding in the Tushita Heaven Palace or appear to enter his mother's womb. He might appear to rest in the womb or be born in limitlessly many worlds. He makes appearances as these. A lot of syllables. There. Let's turn the page and do one more. Ready? He might appear to leave the home life and walk the world's path. Or appear in the Bodhimanda, realizing right awakening. Wow. He may show himself speaking Dharma or entering Nirvana. So all in the ten directions without exception can see. Ah. So all in the ten directions without exception can see. There we go. Da -da -dee, da -da -da.
How about that? First time, right? Never seen these verses before, never sung. And right away, by golly, we can do it. How neat. Making the sutra come alive in the 21st century, right? So, um, in uh, a couple days, I'm going to be on an airplane heading off to Queensland. And uh, the sutra will continue. Tonight, our Dharma friends in Queensland are translating for into Mandarin, sending it off to China. And we had uh, Connie, one of our long, long-time members of our family, said, "How do I tune in to that, to that lecture in Chinese? I wanna, I don't, I don't get your English that well, but I want to hear Chinese." So, um, what we said was, "We will let you know." And uh, um, actually, uh, Jerry, could you type in, "Hey, Cliff." Over there in Australia, is it? Could you send a link to Jerry? And where will we post it? How will people get it? But once once we get it, how will we? I can read it if people want to write it, right? They're using they're using Zoom. Oh, and Zoom goes. Zoom is effective in China, right? Okay, it's Zoom. It'll be a Zoom link. And um, what that means is, how many people have used Zoom? Know how to use it? A lot. How many people use GoToMeeting? A lot. That's really a tie. Same number. Good. We're blessed right now with um, an age where uh, Skype was kind of the first. Skype broke the ground. And Skype was free, which was great. Now we have... uh, upgrades to the quality of that call and it allows multiple people around the world to listen in to a single voice to see what's on the computer of the presenter and also to see pictures and video and the quality of the call is good it's conferencing software their competitors go to meeting and and uh, Zoom are kind of like Coke and Pepsi, you know, kind of like Apple and Microsoft, kind of like Chevy and Ford, what we used to say when I was growing up. Not anymore. Chevy and Ford are both in trouble. So, um, Now, there are Ford drivers who won't be happy with that comment. I'm, I'm, they're fine. So. But Zoom is reliable and uh, free, and you, do, you click on the link, and it allows you to um, install a player in your computer or your iPad or your tablet or your smartphone. It's it's inter uh, what do we say interplatform subjectable subjective. It it works on multiple platforms. I have joined Zoom meetings from my phone, from my tablet, and also from my computer. So, I'm encouraging people who would like to hear a Chinese version of this text, of this lecture, you are welcome to join in. Um, If you want to hear the English, uh, you can from next weekend. If you want to come and listen to the Avatamsaka, I'm going to be on a screen. You're going to get to see a virtual Dharma master. How about that? Pixelated Dharma master. And we're counting on the internet being sturdy in the Gold Coast. And the details are kind of funny, which is we live in the hinterland. We're at the very, very extreme edge of the range of Telstra, which is a local service provider. And uh, the, the reps for the company tell us that even across the street, the reception is half as good, twice as bad. And where we are, we're at the edge. And the Gold Coast is, we have a very 
proactive mayor, bless his heart, Tom Tate, the Honorable Tom Tate, promises that Gold Coast is going to be a leader in Australian broadband receptivity someday. <laughs> right away, real quick now, any day now. So we're hoping, and that would be good. Meanwhile, next week you're going to see me, if you choose to, we welcome you, on a screen here, we bring our projector screen down. You can see the sutra and the monk sitting in the Gold Coast in a Buddha hall, a beautiful Buddha hall. And coming to you from there, um, and I can see you, so if you don't come, I'll know. <laughs> it's actually, it's quite interactive. So if people are here, you can raise your hands and ask questions. So. But we'll try to get everybody in Australia, and I'm sure there's a number of folks sitting in the Buddha Hall today. Hi there, everybody, the Gold Coast. Um, we'll try to get everyone singing along to the sutra as well. And uh, continue with the story of the Devis, right? Our goddesses singing praises of the Buddhas. How neat is that? So how about that? Talk about, you know, the uh, kind of mirrors reflecting we sang tonight. Wayne, you just missed it. You, you could have sung with the Davies if you'd been five minutes earlier, right? So, have to come next week. We are singing in 2019 the songs that the Davies sang about the Buddha 2,500 years ago. How neat is that to be able to do it? We're doing it in English. They were doing it in Deva language, Devanagari, whatever, whatever they sang in the heavens. So that's coming up, and if our, if our bandwidth allows, we'll be, if there's no glitches, and we certainly appreciate the tech on this end, Jerry and other friends who will be making the connection. Um, all of this was impossible just three years ago. He couldn't have imagined being able to sit down under and have the... Uh, the ability to communicate as clear as any image on your computer that you've seen. It's just, there it is, real time. So, how neat. All right, that's coming up. Um, what I would like to do now is transfer the merit of this lecture tonight before we do a little bit more music. It's on the last page of your songbook, if you've got one. This is Dedication of Merit, and it's interactive. You have your part to play. you do that is with your mind, with your, your heart, particularly a wish that you might make to transfer, to dedicate, to give the blessings, the merit, and the virtue of uh, just, you could say, tonight's lecture, being here. You could, what could you have done on a Saturday night tonight? Think of all the things you could have done, and you, you chose to come to the lecture instead. That in itself is a wholesome deed. And then you think about the insights that we may have shared tonight as we looked into this text together. That's meritorious. And uh, think of all the nasty things you didn't do because you were here. Hmm. Right? That's meritorious. And you can share that with the world, with the mind. Because as we say, there's no place in space where our minds do not touch. There is no fence keeping my mind from your mind. If you think of that light we were talking about. So light and light merges. Lights don't stay away from other lights. Our minds likewise touch. So we take advantage of that contact and share goodness. If we are sending out
goodness. They call them shangun, wholesome qualities. The mind can't, <coughs> excuse me, oops, coughing into the mic. <coughs> the, the mind cannot simultaneously hold light and dark thoughts and send them out. So if we put our hearts into a wholesome thought, it touches all the minds we're in contact with as far as your mind can go. And a concentrated mind can circle the earth, penetrate the galaxy, etc., etc., as far as it goes. Make that, make a wish for goodness. What would it be? Myself, my wishes are for more water, less fire. Why is California burning up? Why is wildfire consuming hundreds of millions or millions of acres, that is to say, the new normal? Why in New South Wales and Queensland do the fire marshals say, actually, we can only let it burn? Our dear friends in northern New South Wales, the fires were 10 kilometers from their magnificent, beautiful hinterland home. Uh, I, won't, I won't go into the details, but the horrible stories of the wildlife that lost their lives. Uh, it's, uh, Queensland is a tinderbox right now, and it's only spring. Summer is coming. So my wish is for more water. The fire comes from extracting fossil fuels that should have been better left in the earth, but we bring them out of the earth and then light them. And the results of that creates greenhouse gases. We cut down trees, which are the lungs of the planet, in favor of pasture land for large bodied animals that then become hamburger and steaks and your McDonald's. And those large bodied animals, says the United Nations, are the main source of greenhouse gases, more so than fossil fuels. So being able to transfer slowly to a plant-based diet is the most ecologically effective thing we can do to speak directly to climate change. That's where the fire comes from. So I'm going to dedicate my merit with the wish that that the Gold Coast gets some rain, that California gets some rain. Let's see if we can do that. Here we go. You make your wish the way you'd prefer to do it and then send it out. Here we go. as one and radiant with light share the fruits of peace with hearts of goodness luminous and bright if people hear and see our hands and hearts can find in giving unity May our minds away to great compassion, wisdom, and to joy. May kindness find reward. May all who sorrow leave their grief and pain. May this boundless light Dispel the darkness of their endless night. Because our hearts are one, this world of pain turns into paradise. 
may all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. Alrighty, now, before you close your songbook, I'd like you to turn, please, to page 58. Anybody who was raised in a household that celebrated Christmas will appreciate these. If that doesn't include you, these will mystify you. What's that all about? <laughs> what is that? Why is he doing that? These are Buddhist Christmas carols. And if you didn't sing Christian Christmas carols, it's like, what? Okay. So, to get the, to get the joke, you have to have heard, you know. O little town of Bethlehem, right? O western land of utmost bliss, how pure we see thee lie. Your lotus flowers gave birth to us, our karma purified. The vows of Amitabha, the one of limitless light, saves everyone who says his name, reborn in pure delight. Praise the Buddha. Hallelujah. Bodhisvaha. Right? Okay, how about, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, no. Here we go. Key of E. Ready? Silent mind, holy mind. Silent mind, holy mind, all is calm, all is bright, deep vipassana thoughts rise and fall. With clear insight detached from them all, sit in heavenly peace, sit and contemplate. There you go, you heard it here. Put your hands on the radio. Um, or at least put this on your Spotify list, right? <coughs> on your playlist. Okay, uh, what is a Zabaton? Anybody know? This is a Zabaton. I've got one right here beside me. What is a Zabaton? A Zabaton is the flat cushion in a Zendo. The round thing you're sitting on is called a what? A Zafu. And the Zafu goes on the Zabaton. And then you're ready for Zazen. So, this is a Zabaton. And uh, the tune is, O Christmas Tree. Let's see. O Christmas, uh, which is O Tannenbaum. Anybody who knows it, it's German to begin. O Tannenbaum, O Tannenbaum. Das nicht die Richt an Deutsche, something. So, here we go. O Zabuton, O Zabuton, thy kindness is substantial. I sit upon thee day and night with folded legs and ankles. Thy kapok saves my knees from pain. Through hot and cold, you don't complain. O Zabuton, O Zabuton, Compassion's insulation. 
that's really funny if you think, I mean, that, you know. But if you didn't sing them as Christmas carols, you don't quite get the... the all right. Here we come a wassailing, remember? Here we come a wassailing among the bees so green. Here we come a wassailing so fair to be seen. Da da dee, da da da. Right? How many people know here we come a wassailing? A couple, a couple, okay. So you laugh extra loud. All right, so here we go. Here we come to meditate among tea leaves so green. Here we come to meditate so fair to be seen. Peace and joy come to you. Please perfect your wisdom too. May the Buddhas bestow on you a happy new year. May they send you a happy new year. All right, all right. Every year I threaten to do more of these, right? But I never quite... Uh, thank you, Dharma Master, for not continuing with this series. Okay. And then, the pièce de résistance, right? Le force du frappe is here. It's, I saw two monks. This is the carol called, I saw two ships, right? I saw two ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Two ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning. Right? You've heard these. You go to the mall and you hear them, right? If it's, if it's not in your home, you go to the mall, you can't avoid them. They're just in your ear. I'm done. I don't want to hear anymore. That's the mall place. They become uh, Muzak carols, probably starting already, right? Every year it creeps closer past Thanksgiving, between, Oct- between Halloween and Thanksgiving. So, actually, I, I, shouldn't, I should reduce the snark uh, and be more sincere. These are wonderful songs. The Christmas carols are the best part of being a Methodist. Mm, I promise. So, um, I made them Buddha carols with great respect and, and care. You know, I love these songs. Um, but it's fun to, to try them out, put a Buddhist flavor on them, right? So what's the humor here is the pilgrimage that I took um, in my formative years as a monk. And the pilgrimage involved bowing to the ground every third step up the coast of California on the PCH, the Pacific Coast Highway. It took two and a half years. And myself and my companion, Marty, really saw the backyard of California. Because we were traveling uh, slower than you walk, you know. We were slowly traveling up the coast and we saw everything that there was to see on the coast. Um, And we were seen by everybody along the coast. And people's reactions to us were many and varied. Right? What? What? Josh, it, I, that, that, that's the weirdest thing I've ever seen, and I've been here in Big Sur for 30 years. I ain't seen nothing as weird as that, Josh. Man, what are they doing kissing the ground? Don't ask them. They might tell you. You don't want to know. You know, it's like, oh, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but here is the complete story of somebody looking out on Christmas Day at the monks bowing by. All right? That's the setting for this song. See, see. Uh. I saw two monks come bowing there on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Dressed in robes, they had no hair on Christmas Day in the morning. I've watched them bow since after two on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. They must have nothing else to do on Christmas Day in the morning. I heard they bow for world peace on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. It says so on their press release on Christmas Day in the morning. The one in front, he would not speak on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I've never seen a stranger freak on Christmas Day in the morning. 
I wonder who they're bowing to on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Don't ask him, he won't answer you on Christmas Day in the morning. This happened, this is true. Two preachers came to hassle them on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. To endless hell they did condemn on Christmas Day in the morning. The monks kept bowing just the same on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. The men of God looked pretty lame on Christmas Day in the morning. No offense. I bowed along the avenue on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day, because my uncle dared me to on Christmas Day in the morning. You know, after Christmas dinner, before the football game, nothing to do. So, hey, I dare you. On the spot I felt such peace on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Bowing brought my heart release on Christmas Day in the morning. My surprise, I made a vow on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. Every year I'm going to bow on Christmas Day in the morning. Well, there you have it, another year of Buddha carols, by golly. Who would... When's the album coming out? On Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. The other answer is, don't hold your breath. <laughs> so, those are, uh, what do they say, due to a diminishing number of requests, we have decided to sing them less often. <laughs> so, only once a year, by golly. All right. Um, Berkeley Half Marathon, tomorrow, runs right by the monastery. We are on the route, and we're very close to the finish line here. People go down McKinley, turn left at uh, Dwight, and up to the finish line. Um, wonderful event. There's a 5K, a 10K for families. And uh, they sent us a card this week with the route. It covers the entire city, up to the hills, and down to the, the, the marina, and back, and then through all the neighborhoods, and including ours. So... Uh, it's mostly from, uh, they get to us by about 8.30, and the very, very la the first ones, the, the winners, come choom, zooming through. And then uh, by 12, pretty much everybody, including the walkers <laughs> who walk in. So, yeah, but how neat, you know. So that's tomorrow, a civic event we're really proud of. Last year, canceled, because why? Smoke from the fires. Uh, yeah, um, we uh, just announce it. There's the monastery is taking part in an event tomorrow. That uh, we have a a king tree for the neighborhood. It's a wholesome thing for you to go out in your neighborhood and take a look at the treetops, at the the uh, the crest. And figure out which tree anchors your neighborhood. The trees know. Uh, trees under the ground are in contact with each other. And in harmony, they all draw from the same groundwater. But who's, which tree is the dominant one? And it's age and height and such. So, <coughs> down McKinley there are redwoods. Uh, Closer to the high school, there's a redwood. Those are the, 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 the tree toppers. But in our block, it's a Douglas fir that's two houses down. Been there for a century. It is the shade tree. We've watched crows uh, give birth year after year in this beautiful nest. Squirrels, possums, raccoons, uh, all the, the mammal types. Never mind the insects and the reptiles and the invisible beings that live there. Unfortunately, our Douglas fir that has been here as long as the monastery, 100 years plus, 
is diseased and its core is getting progressively hollow and it's got to come down. There's a forester who lives in the house. She's been watching the tree and relating to it for a long time and has determined, especially because the neighbors are afraid that it's going to come down. So she came to us yesterday and said, I heard that you Buddhists, Buddhists have a thing that you do when you cut trees. And we said, actually, we do. So we tailored a announcement, printed it up, and last night went over and read it to the tree, telling the tree when it was going to be removed with respect and reverence and affection and concern and announcing to all the beings that make their home in the tree that they need to find another place. And we mean them no harm. We wish them well-being. Will they thrive and flourish? But their home is going to be removed. Please, please find a new house. So we announced that side of the mantra. We're going to do it again tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock if anybody wants to come. Meanwhile, um, our northern face is on McKinley Street, uh, uh, Bancroft, sorry, it's on Bancroft, north and, uh, east and west. And it's a big white space. We have determined that along with our wonderful new landscaping terrace and full appreciation to the volunteers, many of whom are sitting with us tonight, who week after week for five months have been building this wonderful new terrace a retaining wall that we have uh, and they finished today. The last blocks went in place. Way to go, guys. I won't name who you are. You know who you are. We applauded you at lunch. And your efforts are, yeah, do it again. Oh, I hear them applauding in Australia. They're not quite sure why, but they're applauding anyway. Cause they're, that, that's good, yeah. So those guys put out strength and patience and wealth to get those beautiful uh, retaining wall terrace built around our property. To finish that off, we're going to take our big white wall and put a bodhisattva on the wall. Now, we haven't spoken to Berkeley Planning yet. Now, you know, they may have an opinion, but uh, we'll see. I think it should be okay. Um, anyway, uh, if you have enjoyed our stained glass, including Amitabha, Manjushri, Samantabhadra, Avalokiteshvara, Kshitagarbha, and the, the dragons, Carolyn of Serenity Glassworks is going to put a bodhisattva on our outside wall. Um, we are going to invite the spirit of the Douglas fir to come inhabit trees that we're going to plant in that grassy area to be reborn in our our new trees that are coming to support the bodhisattva on the wall, Guan Yim Pusa. We'll see whether the tree, the, I mean, the tree has free will. It can come or not, but we would love to have it express its being in our new trees that are coming up. So that's coming up tomorrow. Welcome to come. No lunch involved. We won't feed you, but we want you to come. Sing if you want to. Connie. 20 minutes. It's just, you know, if you drive up from Santa Clara, put an hour in the car for a 20-minute ceremony. Mm -hmm. You can't join online. We probably won't film it. But. And if you don't come, quite okay. Don't feel you have to. The monks will be there. But it's a little backyard. A lot of tree, you know. So we, you know. But just mention it so that you know it's happening. So public service on behalf of the monks. All right, uh, more announcements? Did we ever get the mic out? We never did. The mic, mic didn't happen. Okay. Here, here you go. Okay, so tomorrow we also have the family program uh, with by Jing Forsher and a couple of very hardworking volunteers. They've been meeting every week. Um, so that'll begin at 1.30 and go to about 4.40. Um, Rev. Hong Shur, I think we'll be doing some puppets and stories and music and some meditation with the families. And then we'll have 
um, the theme of gratitude for the rest of the day with programs in the back and also programs for the parents in the front. So if you would like to bring your uh, fr friends and f like family to come, this is a good event to come for. Um, we also have an Amitabha three-day session over the Thanksgiving weekend. I believe that's November 29th, 30th, and December 1st. So if you're interested in attending, uh, please speak with the monastics. Maybe we can get your name down so we can get a, a better head count of who will be coming. Ching Fo Shi, how you Oh, Ching Fo is not here. Tuesday yeah. night, he's beginning to do a Amitabha recitation. It's from 7 to 9 p.m. So if there's no other event at Berkeley Monastery, we have an Amitabha recitation at BBM. So I believe this Tuesday we have one. Okay, anything else? Ching Wei Anything else in terms of events? So will they still coming, Abhagiri monks? One more. One more. So Abhagiri monks will be coming one more time on the first Tuesday of December. So your last chance to catch them before they enter their winter retreat. Okay, yeah. We also wanted to mention that... Um, Last Sunday, we had an extra special, wonderful event here, uh, which what we had 100 people. Um, we hosted our, our, we it moved into our legacy as Institute for World Religions. Our instructions from our teacher were to have a different religion here every single night. And we've been, over our 26 years, pretty good at doing that. Uh, certainly, it's, uh, we have opened our doors to a variety of teachers and teachings and dharmas and faiths and traditions and religions. Um, Amelia, who was the first yoga teacher? What was his name? Dr. Dr. Rao, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who taught at Hindu Banaras University or a yoga center. And yeah, yeah, that was... That was before any of the carpet was here, before these images were here. Dr. Rao taught, taught yoga. And, and, and Bodhgaya. Oh my goodness. And Amelia was here back then, from the start. 26 years, yeah. So her class, by the way, is still happening uh, every Monday night. Uh, and uh, if you talk to, if you want to find out, it's Qigong and yoga. And she is here tonight. You can ask about when that class would start again. Um, so you could take part. Um, the event that we had here was uh, Pralaji Singh Tripanya Ji, who was a singer of Kabir. Kabir is a 15th century Indian poet who speaks the Dharma of Chan. And his poetry is beloved, and, and this wonderful band of the singer and three musicians um, came and sang these poems that every time you heard it translated, you thought, that person sees his nature, her nature, and sings from there. Uh, it was one of the finest nights of Dharma teachings that we've had with this incredible folk-based music. Uh, not sophisticated, not elegant, but powerful in communication. Uh, somebody was listening online as we webcast it, and they said, that's tribal music, you know. And it was absolutely tribal music carrying the wisdom of an awakened mind. That was a wonderful experience. And everyone from that night came away in harmony with a smile. And it was all in Hindi. <laughs> Right? So we just, ah, fantastic. What a great thing. It was a blessing indeed. All right. So, uh, see you from Australia. And the Dharma Wheel will continue turning. Please be part of it. Thank you all for coming tonight. We can bow to the Buddhas. Jerry, how many online? 60 folks on YouTube, 39 from China tonight.
bow in respect to the Venerable Master.